Hello and welcome to Cool Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. We usually do a 12 Mace of Christmas series in December, but we thought we'd change it up this year. So we're bringing you Quiltmas in July. We're still bringing you 12 projects that you can complete as gifts for your family and friends or just quick projects that you can have as home decor for yourself to have around the house in the holiday season. And it's a mix of brand new tutorials. So our last one was a brand new tutorial and some favorites that you guys have loved over the years. That's what we're bringing to you today. We're gonna bring you a replay of our Jelly Roll placemats. This is the pattern from RJ Designs. If you have been a quilter for a while, then you may remember the Jelly Roll rug phase that swept the quilting world a couple years ago. Uh, we sold so many of those Jelly Roll rug batting rolls. It was just so, so many. Um, but we have got uh, this replay for you guys today. Um, just know that if you really love this, there are lots more Jelly Roll rug patterns. Um, today, we're gonna look at placemats the pillows you can make from this pattern, and then also some coordinating coasters. So that's always a fun thing. And as you can see, this does not need to be made from holiday fabric. We just used a fabric line that we thought was really pretty from one of the two and a half inch strip rolls that you can get all over the place. And it's just gorgeous. And I love how this works. And because you have four layers of fabric and four layers of batting, I think you also could very easily use this as like a hot plate to protect your table because it is very dense. There's a lot of protection in here in terms of keeping that heat away from your table. Do test it out first, um, but it's, it's a really fun project. And I think it's a lot easier because it's much smaller and more manageable than the rugs. But if you do like it, there is an oval rug, a circle rug, a rectangle rug, and then of course this pattern for your placemats, your coasters, and your throw pillows. One strip roll will get you, I think it's four placemats and a set of coasters, or you can do a couple pillows. We kind of mixed and matched in this video. So you're gonna get to watch that and see the technique next with that. Um, I am gonna show you some of the jelly rolls that we have in stock right now that you can grab in order to make one of these for yourself or to gift to a friend or family member. All right, so we're gonna start with some Tula because I cannot believe that this is still here. This is the second to last release, Daydreaming. Uh, or Daydreamer, and it is her signature colors, really gorgeous, really pretty, looks fantastic. And we also have the Tiny Beast coordinates still on hand. So you absolutely could get both of these and mix and match them and create a whole set of placemats that are all coordinated and look fantastic together and look really pretty on your table. I think these would be great for spring and summer because the colors are so bright and fun. This is Anna Maria Horner's latest collection, Made My Day. And this one is a very moody, very rich color. As you can see that it gets pretty dark on the end, but we also have some really lighter prints here as well. Lots of florals. So this is one that you can create a lot of dimension on when you're deciding where you wanna lay out your strips. You can really have a lot of fun with that and make each one look a little bit different and unique. This is the last of our rainbow jelly rolls. Um, and this one is from Robert Kaufman and it's Jennifer Shampoo, which is the, I always pronounce her name wrong every single time, I'm pretty sure. But this was the original jelly roll rug um, oval tutorial that we did. We used one of hers that was more of a neutral colorway. And oh my gosh, you guys cannot get enough of that. But this is the chalk and charcoal. So it's the same collection, but in a rainbow colorway. And they're very like dusty rainbow prints. So it's not gonna be your really bright rainbow, but still really fun still give you some really good dimension when you are creating your placemats. All right, now we've got a bunch of cotton and steel and um, RJR. And one thing you can do is you can kind of look at the top of the jelly roll when you're picking it out to see if you like it and if those colors will work for you. This one is really gorgeous. It is Canyon Springs and it is very earth tone. So if you really enjoy the outdoors or you have started to adopt the sage color, which is very popular right now in home decor, this would go with that. We have some green teal colorways, and then we get into some brown um, and golden, and then we finish up with some peach and some rich brown. And it is a modern brown, it is not a like, you know, Civil War brown, so really pretty. That one's brand new, by the way, and so is this one here. This one is Magic of Yosemite, and this one's from RJR Studio, which owns Cotton and Steel, so they're both kind of in the same family. This, again, is also very 
um, earthy. So we have some animals in this one and we have lots of beautiful greens, some taupes, more into brown and tan, and then wrapping up with kind of some grayish over here. So this one's really gorgeous. This would really fit with home decor right now. And because you're only seeing a quarter of the jelly roll strip, you really are just going to be seeing the color more than you're gonna be seeing the design. Like I know there's florals in this, but I can't see a whole flower. What I see is the colors and how they meld out together. So this would be a really fun one to play with. This one is Frolic from Cotton and Steel. And it one is, this one's really fun too. It has a couple of different colorways in it. And this is one where it has a lot more abstract designs. So you're really gonna be able to have fun with the color play on this one more so than the designs because they do work on that, that small scale. All right, this one is RJR Wild Ones. So this one with a fat quarter bundle is like perfect for if you've got a little kid. So especially if you're making some placemats for little kids, this might be a really good one because you're gonna see little bits of the heads of the animals in there. We've got a uh, koala, there is a bear and a lion in here as well. And there's lots of really fun colors. So what you could do really easily is make different color themed sections. So like you could do this section as a color, as a placemat, this color section as a placemat. So if you have multiple kids, they know which placemat is theirs. Or you can make them all the same because they will fight over it. But either way, you have the option with this because they repeat a couple of the prints in each of uh, the strips. So you're going to be able to make it work. This is Chatterbox from RJR. This one has a lot of earth tones as well. It's a lot of florals and a lot of small prints. So it's going to work really well in this pattern and again we have a lot of really fun colors in here as well we've got the earthy greens and taupes some grayishes some greens some charcoals a little bit of rust and even a little bit of purple in there it really is fun and gorgeous all right we're going to wrap up with laurel birch fiesta horses and i will tell you this is the most expensive strip roll that we have the price is accurate Laurel Birch is a licensed print, and so there's extra money involved in that, and it has gold metallic in it. So this one is really gorgeous. It has a combination of all of the prints in the line. There was a golden colorway and a jewel tone colorway, and all of them are in this one, and it is gorgeous. I loved working with this collection. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So you can mix that up as well. You could split the colors into golden versus jewel tone and put them out depending on you know, how your feel is and what you wanna put out that day. Or you can mix it all up because it is meant to all go together too as a collection. But these are really, really pretty. They're gonna look gorgeous on your table and they do work on a small scale even though some of the designs are rather large. All right, so that is our current in stock jelly rolls that you can grab to go with the jelly roll placemats. Again, it's a really fun project. It's definitely a weekend project and it's very beginner friendly. If you had troubles, with like the rug, especially you did one of the curved ones hopping up on you, you don't have those same issues with the straight one. It is really easy to keep them nice and straight, especially when you're working with a smaller set of strips like this one. It really goes very well, very easily. Um, you are gonna wanna get some coordinating yardage. Um, almost all of these we do have coordinating yardage of, and if not, make sure you check out the basics and blender section of our website and you can find something that will work for your binding um, because you just need a tiny little strip to just go along that edge there and the, along the edge of your coaster as well. And I mean, this is just so cute. That's just a great way to use some of that extra. All right, well, I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope you're inspired to make a bunch of placemats. I love placemats, they're a great gift. I made a bunch for myself when I got married and for my sister when she got married many years ago. It's just, it's a fun, quick, um, gift and they're usually not too expensive. Um, if you're doing all the things with the jelly rolls that, that does add up a little bit, but it is, it's a fun one. And these definitely last because there's so much going on in them. They're very sturdy. And so they are going to last through a lot of washings. I mean, it's meant to be used as a rug and that lasts through a lot of washings and people walking on it. So it's definitely going to work for a placemat. All right, let's get into the tutorial. So you need some goodies in order to get started here. Most essential is going to be your batting on a roll. Um, this 
brand by Bolzl is very thin and it is great to use inside of your Jelly Roll rugs because it, it just smashes down real nicely. I tried doing one of these, which is my leftover batting scraps, of which I have many and it just didn't behave as well as when I used the roll. So as much money as you spend on these, it is worth it to get the right product and this is it. They now come on 50 yard rolls, which is enough for one jelly roll. So you don't have to worry about getting batting tape or any of that craziness, it just is plenty. So obviously you need a jelly roll that you like. Um, this one technically is not a jelly roll because it is a copyrighted term by Moda. It is a two and a half inch strip roll. A lot of these us uh, have these around, um, but you can also get specific holiday ones. This one is called Amethyst Garden by Melissa Lowry for Clothworks. I really like the color palette of it and I thought it would look nice for like a spring table runner or placemat. And so I made mine up in that. And you're gonna need some additional coordinating yardage. Um, I just used some Misty, which is also by Clothworks, as it coordinates very nicely with what's going on here. So even if you can't find the coordinating yardage for your roll, chances are you can find a nice blender that will work for that as well. Of course, you need your pattern, pills and placemats, coasters and trivets too. We're gonna cover all that in today's video. A walking foot is very essential. You need this in order for everything to come out nice and straight when you're doing your strips. And then marking tools are nice because then you can label the order that you want to have your strips in when you are assembling them. And I like to have both a light and a dark one because you know, light is gonna show up best on the dark strips and dark will show up best on the light strips. So I like to have two. And you need an entire spool of RFO 50 weight thread. I have been through the majority of mine already and I am down to the just tiny little bits left. So you do need the entire um, 1300 meter spool of RFL. I'm gonna link all these products in the video description down below. It's also helpful to have a little bit of straight starch or a water bottle around because sometimes the strips get a little wonky and we gotta straighten them out before we start sewing them together or they will forever be wonky and your placement won't look as good as it could. You can get everything you need for this project over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. A great way to say thanks for the free video tutorials we put out for you all the time is when you wanna give a project a go to get the supplies from us. We appreciate it very much. So before we started filming this video, I already did a lot of my strips. So I just have two left. And this is the great thing about this one and then also the Jelly Roll Rock 2 is you don't have to plan the order of your strips before you get started because you're gonna stuff each strip with batting individually and then decide later what layout you like best. So it's great. You can really mix and match and make it work as much as you want. So I'm gonna show you how to stuff these strips and I'm gonna show you it on the overhead camera, but the majority of the stuffing that I do besides just getting it started happens as I'm sewing. So I'll show you that as well. So what I like to do here is just lay your strip right over the top and then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold it. I like to turn mine to the side. I feel like that works better for me. Fold it in to the centers. Now, not all jelly roll strips are cut exactly at two and a half inches. I know that we think they are, but they are not. So sometimes, this is a two and a half inch strip roll, um, that, or batting roll and a two and a half inch strip roll, but you can see they're not quite the same. And part of that is because the batting makes it a little thicker. So you can see when I zoom this in that the batting is meeting in the center, but the fabric is not. That's not a problem. You don't have to worry about that because the batting or the fabric is still going past like the halfway mark. So when I fold this over to sew it down, it's still gonna work out just fine. So what I do from here is I just flip it in half and then I'm just gonna stitch straight down the center of this and I find that 99.9% .9 of the time that will catch all my raw edges that are concealed inside here. If you are having trouble where some of your raw edges are popping out, just stitch a little bit closer to the fold edge but there's nothing wrong with your batting or your strip roll if it comes out and it's looking more like this when you're folding it in. You don't need to go to a thinner uh, batting or anything like that. You can still use your two and a half and it will work perfectly fine. I forgot to tell you that you also are going to want to make sure you have a brand new jeans needle in your sewing machine and that will help go through all the bulk without having less thread issues and tension. So once you have the batting turned in on itself twice, 
you're going to kind of pinch that in place and kind of bring it over to your sewing machine. And I don't back stitch or anything at the beginning. I just kind of get going because we're going to do some special treatments to the edges to make sure they don't fall apart. And you can just start sewing. So once you get to the point where your original part that you folded in is done, I just fold everything in as I go. You could take time to do this all with binding clips, but I find that it's just as easy to do it as I go and it takes a lot less time. So what I do, and really I do this with the fold on the left side so that you guys can see it on the camera, but it might be easier for you to do it on the right side if you're right-handed. So just see which works best for you at home. So what I do is I will fold in one side with my finger and then I will fold up with the other pointer finger and then I will fold them in half. And then I just take my pointer finger and I slide it down the center there to kind of make sure those raw edges are nice and tucked in. And then I'll just hold my fingers on top and let it sew. You're gonna let the feed dogs take everything through here. And I'm really only doing about four inches at a time. And when I get through that four inches, then I just repeat the process. I'll show it to you one more time here. I fold in from the top Hold in from the bottom, meet those edges, and then just tuck everything in and hold it down. And sometimes I'll put my hand back here. I'm not pulling anything. I'm just kind of guiding to keep it nice and straight. And I'm sewing straight down the center of that stuffed tube here. But again, if you're having issues where you are able to see the raw edge, you're probably not tucking in those edges as well as you could, but you can always just stitch a little bit closer to the fold and that'll be sure to get it. So this worked really well for me. So when you come to the very end of your strip, what I do is I just cut the batting off even with the edge of my strip. And then I'll fold in again, tuck one last time, and then I just hold my fingers over that edge, keep everything nice and secure as long as I can and then just sew right off the edge. So you can absolutely um, chain piece these and I recommend that you do. It's gonna make your life a lot simpler and that will make you go super fast through this step. I would anticipate spending a couple hours on this step alone. Um, this is one of the longer projects that we are featuring. A lot of the other ones are very, very fast. Um, and this one is too, especially since we're not having to go round and round. We're just gonna have rectangles, which is great. But chain piecing will speed it up tremendously. So once you've finished stuffing all your strips with batting, that's when you have some decisions to make on how you want to arrange it and what you exactly want to make with it. So the back of the pattern will give you guidelines and how many strips you need in order to do the different projects that you can make with this pattern. But I'm going to just give you a wholesale without giving away how many strips you need because you got to get the pattern for that. Um, what you can do with one strip roll. So one jelly roll will get you four placemats, a set of coasters, and a matching trivet. So you can have a very coordinated dining room table. Or you can do sets of two pillows in varying sizes. So it's going to be one or the other. What I ended up doing here is I made enough to do two placemats so I could show you the techniques for that. And then I took a couple extra strips from a coordinating basic so that way I could also make a pillow to kind of show you what that would look like and that way you can kind of see all the different projects that you can make with this one pattern. It's really very versatile. All right, so I'm gonna start laying these out in an order that's pleasing to me. What I did was make sure that I had two of every print in here. That way I can sort of have it be a mirror image coming in. All right, so I've got everything laid out in a layout that is pleasing to me. And what's pleasing to me is gonna to be totally different to you. But what I did is I did the mirror image coming in. So that way we came from lighter to darker and as it goes out, it's going to be looking the same. Now that means you have to pay a little bit of attention as you're putting stuff together because I have been known to flip some things around. I'm sure you will too. But one thing that will help keep it straight is if you use your marking tools to number the size of your strips, you can just write like this is my number one. So I'm gonna write number one right here in the selvage and just go straight down the line so that way I know what order everything is supposed to be sewed in. The other thing to note is you wanna make sure that your folded edges are always going to be together. 
that will help everything lay nice and flat and it will also ensure that you have a single side edge on the outside so you want to make sure that in both instances of this that the single side is facing out when you are starting both at the top and the bottom it just looks a little nicer than having this double fold facing out so that will make your life a lot better when you are sewing this together so i'm going to get these all labeled up and then i'm going to clear my space so i can start sewing these guys together with the zigzag stitch now the pattern tells you exactly how, what stitch setting to use for your zigzag for your length and your width so i recommend following that and that is available in the pattern the pillows and placemats coasters and trivets by rj design so grab that and that will help you with this next step so i'm just grabbing my one and my two strip and again i'm making sure that the sides with the double folds are facing each other and i'm just going to slide both of those right underneath with the center of my walking foot down that center where those two are going to meet i'm going to go ahead and get started sewing those guys together and i'm just kind of holding them together the zigzag stitch kind of acts like a corset string and kind of pulls them together so as long as they're not super far apart when you're putting them together you'll be fine so i just kind of put my hands down and kind of form like a gutter for those to go through to try to keep it nice and straight as i go So this is what your strip should look like once you get it all together. It'll have that nice zigzag holding it together. And you should have nice single fold edges on both sides because the double fold has been nice and smushed down in between here. Now, if you start to notice that your bobbin thread is getting pulled up and your stitch count is off, one, you can re-thread everything that usually solves most problems. If that doesn't do it, then change your needle out, see how that goes. You also can take your plate off and really clean out underneath there. Um, it tends to get really fuzzy when you're doing the stuffing of the strip stage. And make sure you're taking this plate off too and actually digging in in between those feed dogs because it tends to get impacted in there. And you can also wind yourself a new bobbin. If you are still having issues after that, then the timing is maybe off on your machine and you should take it in to get it looked at. But one of those steps should fix the issues that you are having. All right, so I'm gonna continue sewing into sets of two and then we will come back and we will do some more. Once you have everything sewn into sets of two, you really wanna take your time to inspect your strips and make sure they're nice and straight. Let me show you what I mean. So if I'm looking at this strip, it's really very, very straight, but I've got a little bit of a bend here. And if I don't take care of that, then it's going to always be there and your placemat is not gonna turn out super straight in the end. Let's see if we have any that have an even bigger bend than that. This one, you can see it's kind of curving down. And so this is the one that I'm gonna fix on camera so that way you guys can see what to do if you end up with a bend like this, because you don't want to sew it in at this point, you wanna fix that first. So it's helpful to use a mat that has some sort of measuring device on it, but it's not essential. I'm just gonna take a little bit of, um, this is just water in here, and I'm just misting that real lightly. And then I've got it lined up with this inch line here, and I'm just gonna press it and just get that nice and straight. And then I'm ending here, but I'm not gonna bring it all the way down. What I'm gonna do is bring it about halfway on my pressing surface. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process going all the way down. And that way I can make sure that I'm pressing this into a nice straight piece. It might be a little hard to tell on camera, but I've taken the piece that I just pressed and then I pulled this identical piece on the other half. And I really am loving the way that this looks where it's just nice and flat and straight. Whereas this one's still a little puffy because you know we've sewn it together, we folded it over. It just isn't as precise as it could be. So if you want, you can go ahead and press all your strips, but it is only absolutely necessary that you do it for any ones where you find that there is a bend in them. And then once you're done with that, you can start sewing your sets of two into four and so on until you have as many strips as you need to sewn together, whether you're doing the placemat or a pillow. All right, well, let's come back once you have everything all sewn together. All right, so I've got my entire strip set sewn together and the correct amount of tubes for the placemat series. Now what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line 
that is perpendicular to your outside edges and as close to the selvage as you can get. Now, in this case, my selvage is all wonky. Don't worry, it's fine. Everything's gonna turn out just right for you. It just kind of sometimes stretches a little bit as you get it going. So I've drawn my line straight down. I had to use two different color marking pencils for that because some show up better on the light and some show up better on the dark. And then you're gonna measure over to whatever measurement it is that you are told for the project you're doing. So it's gonna be different if you're doing placemats versus pillows and the pillow size will vary again based on what size pillow you're making. So please refer to your pattern for that. So I'm gonna sew a line, just a straight line, down both sides of this line that I drew and that will help ensure that none of these seams pop open when I cut it apart. All right, so I stitch really close to that line on both sides. So that way when I cut this apart, it is going to be nice and secure and ready to attach the binding to the side edges. So I'm just gonna line that up on the line that we drew and give it a nice little cut right on that line. To get your center done, you can go ahead and flip it around and do the exact same thing to even up your edges. Once you cut everything apart, you should have two placemats that just need binding on the sides, and you should have one extra bit that you can use either for a trivet or for coasters. So you're gonna have one of these from each set of these if you're doing the placemat set. So one you can use for trivet, and then the other extra piece you can use for your coasters, or you could just have a lot of coasters. Whatever you wanna do, mix and match, have some fun with it. Now, if you've done the Jelly Roll Rug 2, then the binding for the edge of the placemats is the exact same as the edge of the Jelly Roll Rug 2 rug. First, you're gonna fold everything in half, just like you would for a regular binding for your quilt. And this is from your extra yardage, by the way. Now, still using our walking foot, we're gonna stitch all the way down the side to secure the raw edge of the binding to the raw edge of your placemat, just like you would for a quilt. You're gonna start and stop here at the tops and I'm gonna reinforce my stitches there just to keep it nice and secure. Also make sure you've got some fabric hanging off both edges so that way we have something to turn under when we flip it around to the other side. I'm just sewing this to the edge the same way I would if I were doing quilt binding. I'm holding it back here, I'm not pulling anything, I'm just kind of holding it nice and steady and straight because this is a pretty hefty placemat at this point. It's kind of wanting to curve to the side because we've got a lot of batting and fabric in there. It's gonna be great though, because it's really gonna protect your table if you put some hot dishes on top of it because there's really a lot of insulation in there. All right, I've come to the end. I'm reinforcing those stitches again. So now we've reached the point where it's really helpful to have a couple of pins or binding clips around. What I'm gonna do is just trim this so that I maybe only have like an inch or so past where the edge of the placemat is. We don't have to do the top or the bottom because we have that nice finished edge from making sure that that single folded edge is on the outside. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just going to press this over with my hands and then around to the back. And you can do this where you are, you know, really pressing it down and, and keeping it in place, but I just kind of fold it over. All right, so the important part here is gonna be to tuck in this edge. So first I'm gonna fold in that edge so that it is tucked in there, just like that. And then I'm gonna fold this part down a smidge as well. That way we kind of have a little corner there and I'm not really going to see any raw edges when that gets flipped over. Now I'm pressing that over the rest of the way. And this is going to be the bottom of your placemat. No one's ever really gonna see it, but it's still good to take your time and, and get it right. All right, so I've got that corner tucked under. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a couple of pins in along here, just to kind of help keep everything nice and turned over. You could also use some steam -a seam at this point. We have a binding hack where I showed how to use that to get your binding to stay in place. 
So now flipping everything back over so that the right side is back up, I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch all the way along here to secure that. And I wanna do it from the front because I want it to like be centered over where this binding strip is. Because if it's not perfect on the back, that's okay. No one's ever gonna see it. It's gonna be facing your table. It's not even like a quilt back where someone might see the edge of the binding. So I want this front part to look good. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. I'm using the exact same zigzag stitch I used when I attached all of the strip tubes together. That way everything looks nice and uniform. And make sure to reinforce that thread at the beginning and the end of your binding so it stays nice and secure with use. So that is looking pretty nice and uniform. It is a real nice tr edge treatment to our placemats. You want to repeat that to the other side. You could of course always uh, sew this onto the back, but this holds it all together pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it and I think it looks great. So doing the pillow is almost the exact same process of doing the placemats. The exception is, is once you cut out your pillow front, you're going to, instead of sewing binding on, you're gonna attach it to your pillow back. Now, Roma Lamson, the pattern designer, asked me not to show her secret trick for attaching it to the background. So I've already got my pillow all put together here. And she instructs you to use just coordinating fabric for your back, but I had an entire extra half and I didn't want two pillows, I wanted one pillow. So I decided to just make both sides of mine from the Jelly Roll. Um, and it is super cute and I love it and it's super sturdy and I think it's gonna hold up really well over time. I just put a little zipper in on the bottom for mine, that way I can change that out whenever I want. And that worked really well for me. So you can always mix and match, but if you're cutting the pillow out, it's gonna be the same process as cutting your placement out. And then you just have to attach the back. And if you are doing it, make sure you check out the instructions for her little tip and trick on how to keep those edges from fraying and holding up a little better over time. The trivet is also gonna go the exact same way as your placemat. You're just gonna square it up to whatever size you want it to be. You're gonna add some binding to the sides and you're good to go. All right, so the only thing that's left at this point is to work on our coasters. So in the pattern is a template that shows you how large you're supposed to cut your piece. You can easily get two of the coasters from each leftover bit from your placemats. So I'm gonna go ahead and line mine up so that they're even with the darker edges because I'd rather have a coaster on a darker piece of fabric than on the lighter bit where it's gonna show more stains if something gets spilled. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna trace it. And again, I'm gonna need two marking types for this because my uh, purple is not gonna show up over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut in on the line that I just traced. So Roma asked that I not show you how to make the binding for the coaster, but I will tell you that the instructions are very clear for it. It tells you exactly how to cut your strip and to what size it needs to be and how to get it so that it looks like this, a nice little circle. So that part is super, super clear. Now the other thing I've done here, and it's gonna be hard to see on camera, is I transfer the markings because you wanna divide this into quarters so that way you can evenly pin your binding. So I have a mark up top and a mark on the side and then my other bits are halfway in between right here. So I didn't really have to mark there. It's just gonna be where the seam is on mine. So first I'm gonna start by pinning those four sections. So I've got the raw edges even, just like you would for any binding. And whenever you're doing circular binding like this, it is nice to just take the teeniest little bit when you are pinning. That way there is more sort of wiggle room when you are making this work going around. Um, it just makes life a lot easier if you can take a smaller little bit with your pin. Like that is really tiny. Um, you also could use binding clips for this if you prefer. And I kind of just marked my four corners on the binding with my iron. So that way I just had a nice crease to worry about and I didn't have to worry about marking up all those lines. All right, so I've got that all pinned. I'm gonna add at least two pins in between to help sort of flatten this out as we're going. Sort of divide that into thirds. You can always pin more than that. Um, whatever makes you feel comfortable is what you should pin. 
Um, but for me, I think that that is, is pretty good. You don't need too much more than that. This will be plenty to help hold everything in place until we can get it sewn in. All right, so we are all pinned up. It kind of looks like a clock. It, it's got all the pins at the dials where all your hours would be. So now I'm just gonna sew my regular quarter inch stitch going all the way around here to secure it to the front of my coaster. All right, so I'm sewing about a quarter inch stitch and I'm gonna reinforce those stitches at the front and back again. And the key part here is really just to go nice and slow. So I'm just gonna remove my pins as I come to them. And then I kind of like to lift out that presser foot and just flatten out the next part. That way I'm not sewing over pleats or anything funky like that. So again, we'll stop, remove the pin, flatten everything out and make our way to the next part. All right, so this is what it looks like from the front and then from the back, it just looks like that. And because of the way this binding is prepared, we should just be able to flip it over to the edges and it will curl over all on its own and kind of stay in place, which will be wonderful for when we go to go around this. And it is looking pretty dang good from the front. So that's nice and even. And from the back, you can see that it, it kind of wants to fold in on itself. And that's because of the way the binding is prepared. And again, all those instructions are really easy to follow and they are in the pattern, but I've been asked not to show you them on camera, but we got to this part. So that will help with that. Now, what I'm gonna do here is instead of pin all this, I'm actually just gonna press it with the iron and a little bit of water, and that will help this lay nice and flat. And then we can kind of skip the pins and just do our say say stitch to secure it. So I'm just gonna kind of work my way around and just pressing that in with the nose of the iron first to get a nice crisp fold around the edges. So already it's turning in a little bit more after doing that. Now I'm gonna spritz it with a little bit of water and then just hit it with the top of the iron to get it nice and flat. You could also use your favorite spray starch for this and that would work just as well. All right, we've got that pretty well turned in and pretty flat at this point. So now I can flip it over and zigzag stitch around. That'll catch everything and it'll hold and it'll look fabulous. I'm still using that same zigzag stitch setting that I used when I sewed all those um, strips together. So that way everything looks nice and uniform. Now I find that the feed dogs just kind of want to turn this on its own whenever I do anything curved like this. So all I'm doing is kind of just holding my hands here and letting it kind of turn as I go. And I'm just really just kind of guiding it. I'm keeping it real nice and smooth and letting the sewing machine do its thing. Now, isn't that just adorable? It's so stinking cute. It's so fun and cheery. And again, it's really thick and sturdy. So it really is going to protect your surface that you have a drink sitting on very well. And what a great way to use some leftovers from those strip sets for those placemats or your pillows or whatever. I had leftovers from both. So it all works out just fine. Well, thank you so much for following along with this tutorial. Again, you can use this pattern. We'll make four placemats and coasters and a trivet, or you can make sets of pillows like I did here. What I did, I used one entire jelly roll and I made two placemats and the coasters. And then I did one pillow with both sides being the jelly roll covered. And what I did in order to make that happen, because you don't quite have enough strips in one strip roll to do it, is I just added um, some extra strips and yardage from this coordinating print. So this is Misty by Cedar West for Clothworks, and it's made from the same manufacturer that makes this fabric as well. So it coordinates really beautifully. Everything I've used here today is going to be linked in the video description down below. So if you wanna give these a go, a great way to say thanks for us taking the time to do these videos to help you through these projects is to get the supplies from us if we've inspired you to give something a go. So thanks so much for following along and until tomorrow, happy quilting.